Hello there, welcome back to part two. Let's uh, solve a couple problems here and try to wrap things up, hopefully for you. Uh, number eight on your page is a nice application problem. We have Theo sending emails to three, friend, three friends. Each friend forwards the email to three friends. Okay, so Theo sends one um, email to three different friends and then they forward it to three friends. So he sends it to three friends and then they send it to three friends. Each of those three friends forwards it to three more friends and so on and so on. It says write the number of emails sent during the fifth stage of the power. Then find the value. And I want to show you how to use this problem to create uh, an exponent to make it a little easier than, uh, than just trying to count them up. Put a dot right here, please. All right. And we'll put a T. That stands for Theo. And we're going to call this stage zero. Okay, and this is asking for the fifth stage uh, of this particular problem. Okay, so if that's stage zero, let me show you what stage one would be. It, it said that Theo sent three emails. So continue um, the drawing kind of like mine. All right, he sends three emails. Okay, or uh, th uh, email to three different people. So let's call this stage one. Okay, and in stage one, let's over here, let's say emails. In stage one, he had sent three emails. Okay, and three is the same thing as three to the power of one. Okay, the first stage, three to the first stage, three to the one is three. All right, now. Then it says each, right here, it says each of those friends forwards it to three friends. Okay, so he sends it, this guy sends it to three, this guy sends it to three, and this guy sends it to three. Let's call that stage two. Now count up how many emails were sent in stage two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There were nine emails sent in stage two, which happens to be the same thing as three to the power of two, right? Because three times three is nine. Okay, well, what if this pattern continued to stage three? So this guy sends it out three times, and this guy sends it out three, and he sends it out three. Now it gets really hard to draw because the lines get so close. Three, six, nine, and if you count that up at stage three, you can count them up if you want to, at stage three, he had sent three to the power of three, which is 27 emails. Now I could go ahead and try to draw stage four, but the question says this right here. It says what, how many emails were sent at the fifth stage? So if I continue that pattern, if I can just figure out what three to the power of five is, you will have the number of emails that were sent because each time three more emails were sent. So since in the last video I showed you how to use a calculator, let's make our life a little bit easier. And I'm encouraging you again to get your own calculator and bring it in class, and this is one of the reasons why. With a scientific calculator, if you look at it, and if you have yours with you, take it out. And you should see, if it's a scientific calculator, you have one of three buttons, okay? And it looks like this, let me show you. One button, Depending on the type of calculator, it might say y to the x, it might say x to the y, or it might be this symbol of a kind of an arrow pointing up. You also could have x to the power of 2, and you might even have, if you have a really big one, big keyboard, you might have x to the power of 3. The ones we're going to focus on are, are one of these three. It should be on there if it's scientific. Probably you have this one here with the arrow pointing up because that's the computer symbol for exponent. So it's often the one that is used. Well, the model that I have uses this x to the y. Okay, so let's go back to what we were trying to solve here. 3 to the power of 5. This is what we were solving right here. What is 3 to the power of 5? Well, I don't want to count it up. I don't want to multiply it by hand. So I'm going to go to my calculator, 3. Just click the 3, and then you hit your power button, whichever one you had. You click that, and that means raise to the higher power of. This is probably, again, the symbol on your calculator, the arrow going up. 3 to the power of 5, 
and you hit equals and it does it for you. There it is, right there, 243. You see on my screen there and my screen up here. Okay, so uh, 3 to the power of 5, the answer is 243. Okay, so in the fifth stage of this particular pattern, in stage 5 there would be 243 emails sent. Now our calculator is going to be extremely helpful for us, particularly as we move down the page into problems like this. Number 9 says uh, it's asking us to evaluate, that means find the value, if A is 3, B is negative 4, and C is 3.5. So what we do is in number 9 we're going to substitute 3 and for a, 3 to the power of 3 plus 2. Well, 3 to the power of 3, that means 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. You don't believe me? Go back to your calculator. Now, mine has x to the third, so I could put in 3 to the power of 3 using that button here. Or, if you have a button like this, you could just hit 3 to the power of 3, and it'll put it in for you. Like that equals 27. All right, so go back here thinking, oh, that was nice and helpful, 27 plus 2 is 29, which is the value of that particular expression. You could put that whole thing in to your calculator, 3 to the power of 3 plus 2, I believe is what it was, Hit equal, and it'll do it for you again. It'll tell you it's 29. If you don't have a scientific calculator, that won't do it for you, and you have to do it by hand. Okay, so moving on to number 10 here, we have 3 times b minus 1, all to the power of 2. Okay, I know that b is negative 4, so watch what happens on this particular question. You have 3 times b is negative 4, so it's negative 4 minus 1. Now, you need to the power of 2. You need to change that to addition, and you need to do the parentheses first, because remember, we always follow the order of operations. Just like we did over here, we did all the exponents first. This particular one, we have to do inside the parentheses first. So you have 3 times negative 5, because negative 4 plus 1 is negative 5, all to the power of 2. All right, on line 2 here, you have 3 times negative 5. Okay, to the power of 2, you have to do the exponent here at this line. So that means negative 5 times negative 5. Now we've learned that a negative times a negative is positive. That's 25. So that evaluates to 25 times this 3 right here. And 25 times 3 is equal to 75. Right there. Let's go on and look at number 11 and 12 and then we'll be all done. Number 11 says c to the power of 2. Now c is 3.5. Now let me give you a rule of thumb here. I did it in the last question, but I didn't say it. Whenever you substitute a variable into an exponent, a really smart thing to do is just put it in parentheses and then put the exponent on there. If you do that and input it appropriately in your calculator like that, you're more likely to get the answer right. And getting it right is always a good thing. So let's take a look at, uh, well, I need to get the rest of this problem down here. Sorry about that. Uh, we have 3.5 to the power of 2. That was the C plus B squared. Uh, plus, now B, notice B is negative 4. Now this is really important that you put parenthesis negative 4, and on the outside you put the exponent. You may not understand why, but you need to do it that way, as we'll find out later. All right, now what we need to do now is we need to figure out what 3.5 squared is. Now, you can work that out by hand, or again, you can go back to your calculator. 3.5 squared, 3, whoops, clear it out, 3.5. If you have that power of 2 button, I would hit that and hit equals. All right, they give you the nice decimal value. Just use that, 12.25, right there. 12.25 is that, whoops, 12.25 plus... Negative 4 squared, well that means negative 4 times negative 4, because I'm getting low on time here, I'm going to just show you down here. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16, and that's why you have to have the negative sign in there, is because the negative is taken to the power of 2, it's positive 16. Alright, now you've got 12.25 plus 16, and that is equal to 28.25, which is good for this right right now. Now let me show you how, you, you do have to justify your work, but I'm going to see if I could get that into my calculator. Watch this. The question we just did, 
uh, 3.2. Now I, I can even input parentheses here. Watch this, 3.5. And trying to show you here why your own calculator is quite valuable. 3.5 to the power of 2 plus, and I'm going to do parentheses, I'll do a negative sign, negative 4 parentheses to the power of 2. And watch this, hit equals, voila, 28.25, exactly what we got. So you can check everything that you do uh, on your uh, papers there. Well, we're a little bit over time now, so I'm going to stop now. I think we have enough information for you, so we won't worry about uh, number 12 for now. Uh, just get these notes down, bring them to class, and we will get moving on things uh, the next class period.